So in the last video, we found out everything that Cardi was suing Tasha for, and we went through the documents so that everybody could see that Cardi's lawyers were very well prepared with facts to back up her claims against Tasha. And her case is actually looking pretty good right now. We left off wondering if Tasha even had a case, seeing as how it seemed that she had not a shred of proof to back up her counterclaims against Cardi. Now, I told you all that I had to finish going through all of these documents that I had skipped over some things because I just wanted to get to the meat of the new claims that Cardi had made against Tasha now. So now that I've had the chance to go back through them to read about Tasha's claims against Cardi and how her case is going, um, we're going to go through that in this video. But Instead of me reading this transcript of the Q&A between the judge and Tasha's lawyer, what I'm going to do is just read the judge's decision at the end of the arguments to dismiss either party's cases because this is what this was all about. Both parties were in court trying to get each other's cases dismissed. So after all of their arguments were done, the judge came back with his decision regarding dismissing either of them. So I'm going to read to you guys what the judge said. And let me just tell y'all right now, he is hilarious. He said, if this was the defendant Tasha K suing the plaintiff Cardi B, and that's all we had, I would probably dismiss this case today and it would be without prejudice. But given that the plaintiff Cardi B has brought this lawsuit and that these issues that will be involved in discovery are almost exactly the same issues that are brought up in the defendant Tasha K's counterclaim, I'm not going to dismiss it at this point in time, but I will tell the defendant Tasha K this, that if this is the best I get on a motion for summary judgment, the defense is going to lose. There has got to be more specifics. And you know, even if I dismiss the defendant's claims today, I would let the defendant do discovery about it in the course of this case because it is all congruent with the allegations that are made by the plaintiff. The plaintiff says that the blogger lied about, about me. Well, you know, then the plaintiff coming back and saying that could very well be libelous if it's not true. And the plaintiff knows that it's not true. So there's really no extra there. If the plaintiff did scheme with schemo to cause a threat to be made directly or indirectly against the defendant in order to induce the defendant to retract or to stop what she was doing, that may be actionable. It might not be assault. I'm not sure. I'm more familiar not with the tort of of assault but with the crime of assault and then the crime of assault does require the immediacy to the act i will say this you know if a defendant in a jail posted something online and defendants do have access to phones in jail sometimes that made some of the same generalized threats toward me i'd be concerned about it and i would have the u.s marshals and the fbi all over it so i can understand that if there were such threats that were made as have been outlined in argument not necessarily in pleadings that it could cause the defendant some harm whether it be assault or not i'm not sure i think probably intentional infliction of a emotional distress is probably a better claim for that if it is true that it happened if the plaintiff did induce the defendant to do those types of things excuse me if the plaintiff induced schemo to do those types of things towards the defendant plaintiff might be a party to a crime in this state and if she is a party to a crime to this state the then that raises the specter of a potential tort all the more but i'm not saying any of that happened i really don't know honestly you know well let me just say i understand why the defendant wants the cases to go away i understand why the defendant has brought the cases a lot of this is just litigation leverage you know the defendant brought these claims for litigation leverage. The plaintiff wants them to go away. And even though they're arguing in the discovery about them all for litigation leverage, I don't think that's necessary at this point in time for me to rule on that. All of this could go away if y'all wanted it to go away. This would be a very interesting trial for a jury, you know? I tried a two and a half to three week jury trial about a month ago on an SEC insider trading. That was not very interesting for the jury. You know, you bring Cardi B in here, the allegations that are made, the jury would have a ball. <laughs> but I do believe that the parties could settle this case if they wanted to. If they don't want to, that's fine. 
Trying cases is the most fun thing I do because I don't have to work at night. I get to walk in on Monday morning and get started and I leave at 5 30, 6 o'clock. I drive home and watch sports and the news while y'all get to go to work. <laughs> when I interviewed to be a judge the first time with the governor of Georgia, he asked me why I wanted to be a judge and I told him, you know, all the right Sunday school answers about public service and all that kind of stuff, which was all true, but I also said I was tired of working on weekends and nights getting ready for court the next day. So. I understand how hard it is to try a case from the standpoint of being a lawyer because you have so many balls up in the air. But you know, if this case were to go to trial, I think we'd all have a little bit of fun with it, but I prefer if you could settle it, if you could. But if not, then we'll deal with it. The defendant, Tasha Kay, has got to do a much better job with her counterclaims and the motion for summary judgment or she's probably going to lose them all. Okay guys, so there you have it in the judge's own words. I chose not to put the transcripts in here because first of all, there were 46 pages. Second of all, it was not just Tasha's lawyer and the judge going back and forth. It was also Cardi's lawyers doing their Q&A with the judge. So because of that, I just decided to not do all of that because it was a little hard to follow. And if you're not good with a lot of, you know, uh, court terminology, then it could be a little aggravating to get through. So that's why I decided to just go ahead and tell y'all what the judge decided for both of their cases. And he's basically deciding not to drop it because basically both of their claims are basically the same if he's going to allow cardi b's claims to stay then tasha's is allowed to stay but he is telling tasha that you need to provide him with some actual receipts basically of your claims because what he was seeing in here and the arguments from your lawyer they were definitely not enough to make any type of your claim stick whatsoever and they definitely act xed out the defamation claim because her calling you a blogger lady is not defaming you so you don't have no case there the only thing he thinks that you may have a case on is possibly your so-called threat claims from her friend schemo but when he asked the lawyer about what were the actual threats or whatever it was a little iffy on those receipts as well so this is why he's telling you that he would have most likely have dropped the case if it would have just been you against cardi because you don't have one like i said so with that being said, I want to thank all of those who tuned into this video. I want to send a special shout out to all of those who stayed around until the end of this short video. Please don't forget to like, share, and subscribe to this channel, and I will see you guys later. Goodbye.